Redemption 2. While the Klingon Civil War rages on, somebody working on the show discovers word art. Seriously, look at that title. I don't know why they chose to do that. It was definitely unnecessary, given that this is season 5. It was fine the way it was, and it felt like it was trying too hard to be cool. We begin with Worf on board Kern's ship, as it is attacked by enemy Klingons. They fly near a star before warping away, which causes the pursuing ships to be destroyed. Picard is pleading his case that Starfleet should do something about the Klingon Civil War, saying it's not internal, since Romulans must be helping out the Duras faction. He presents a plan to set up a blockade near the Klingon-Romulan border to expose any supplies being sent by the Romulans. And the net will be set up so that if any Romulans try to cross the border even cloaked, they can still detect them. Picard is laying out what everyone's going to do and the actions they're going to take, and I really liked him doing all of this captain-y stuff. And I can't think of other times when we've seen him so involved. Will, I want you to command the Excalibur. Her crew was reassigned when she put in for repairs. Geordi, you will be his first officer. Aye, sir. I want to add the Tiananmen, the Sutherland, and the Hermes, whether the art superintendent says they're ready or not. Yeah, we're not used to these characters being so intelligent about things. There aren't enough ships in the area to be able to carry out the plan effectively, so they're going to have senior officers from the Enterprise serve on other ships. After Geordi and Riker leave, Data asks Picard why he wasn't assigned a captain position of his own, and suggests that it may be due to Picard's racism against robots. And Picard ends up giving him the Sutherland to command. Kern and Worf are in a neutral Klingon cafe, drinking in the same area as some of their enemies, which leads to some tension. Which I thought was kind of silly. I liked it because it shows an aspect of Klingon culture that felt plausible. I thought it was very over the top, the way they're just headbunting each other. It was a bit too much, but I like the idea behind having people that are enemies of each other kind of hanging out in the same place. And Kern chastises Worf for worrying about strategies and ships and winning and whatever, which gave me some insight into why the Klingons don't always win. He tells Worf he needs to just live as a Klingon in the moment. And meanwhile, the Duras sisters watch from the sidelines. Data heads to the Bridge of the Sutherland, where he meets Lieutenant Commander Hobson, who I could tell before he even talked that he was going to be a huge dick and not want to take orders from Data. It was a bit much. But the Klingons all headbutting each other and stabbing each other was not a bit much. Well, in terms of being able to just tell what his character was going to be like, they really, really, really overplayed it. He was in Ghostbusters, you know. He was the violinist. What's the stuff? I did like how Data shut him down, though. I understand your concerns. Request denied. Rami Lintasha finds out that Picard is heading towards the border and begins her counterplanning. Gowron is challenged by a Klingon who says that their side is losing because he is an inferior leader. And Worf tries to get them to work together instead of fighting amongst themselves, but Gowron still kills the challenger. Starfleet starts spreading the net, and Picard knows that the Romulans will quickly catch on, which seems to excite him because he is a bloodthirsty savage. <laughs> Romulan Tasha decloaks her ship and hails Picard, telling him she is Tasha Yar's daughter, Sila. So they're trying to figure out if she is who she says she is. And Troy says she seems to be telling the truth. And Beverly points out other possibilities, which I did like. And Picard realizes they have bigger fish to fry, and it could just be a huge distraction, and I'm glad he pointed that out too. Guinan comes in to tell him a very vague version of the events of yesterday's Enterprise, and says that Picard is responsible for Sila's existence due to Tasha being sent into the past aboard the Enterprise C. Worf is arguing with Kern about the ways they're doing stuff, and I thought it was amusing that Kern was using valuing honor against Worf because for so long, it seemed like no other Klingons besides Worf really valued that, but now all of a sudden they all do. Yeah, I think they kind of twist things around to however it suits them at the moment. And when Kern leaves, some other Klingons come in and beat up Worf, who just stands there like an idiot. Picard meets with Sila and tells her that he wants to make sure the Klingon war stays internal, and also to find out if Tasha is really her mother. She tells him the whole story about how Tasha was captured by Romulans and had a Romulan general's daughter, and then Tasha ended up being executed when she tried to flee with Sila. But Sila feels that she is completely Romulan at this point. The Duras sisters get creepy with Worf when he awakens, and they want to make an alliance with him and have him guide Toral as he leads the Empire. 
but Worf rejects the offer, and Sela appears on a screen to tell them to give up on that plan for now. And this is the first time Worf has seen her, but he seemingly has no reaction. And the Romulans take him for interrogation. Picard tells Gowron to attack while the Duras forces are in need of supplies, which will force the Romulans to expose themselves. And he purposely makes a hole in the net for the Romulans to pass through. What Picard doesn't know is that the Romulans have found a way to cause interference in the net, so Sela decides not to go through the obvious hole, but use Data's area to break through instead. Picard orders all the ships to pull back and redeploy in another location, but Data decides to try to identify the location of the Romulan ships, and Hobson is still arguing with him every step of the way. His plan only has a short window to work, so when the Enterprise contacts him to see why he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing, he just ignores them. It seemed like it would have been easy to send a message to Picard explaining, though, especially since he has to explain to his own people anyway. Why not just do it at the same time? I mean, he doesn't even have to communicate the message himself. He could tell somebody else to do it who's just sitting there doing nothing. And then Data, the emotionless robot, gets angry as Hobson continues to question him, and Picard keeps trying to get through, but Data finally has them fire torpedoes at the suspected location of the Romulan ships. And it forces the Romulans to retreat, leaving the Duras faction helpless. The Duras sisters tell a Romulan guard to kill Worf, but he easily defeats him, and they warp out, leaving Toral behind. And then Kern walks in and captures Toral. While Picard is getting ready to report everything to Gowron, Data requests disciplinary action because he didn't follow orders, and Picard agrees and dismantles him and sends all of his various components to an abandoned warehouse, so he's not going to be in the show from this point forward. <laughs> what do I say next? My note says, let Robert finish this one. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not what actually happens, and instead he tells Picard that his actions were appropriate under the circumstances, which was predictable and dumb. He must have really liked this one. Picard reports to Gowron, and they wheel in Toral. And Gowron chooses to give Toral's life to Worf and expects him to kill him, but he refuses and says he won't kill him for the crimes of his family, despite it going against Klingon ways. And then he leaves with Picard to return to the Enterprise. Redemption 2, overall. I thought this was a good, satisfying conclusion to the two-parter. I thought the Dura sisters were more interesting this time around and had more to do. And I liked that they escaped in the end and that they abandoned that little bitch Toral. <laughs> <laughs> I was glad the plans of the Romulans and the Federation made sense. Although Data's handling of things was needlessly overdramatic and the Hobson subplot was predictable, underdeveloped, and unnecessary. Sela being related to Tasha didn't end up mattering at all, which I didn't necessarily mind in itself but it was disappointing given the build-up with the cliffhanger from last season. But overall, I thought it was an episode that successfully juggled multiple subplots and characters without dropping anything other than that Hobson thing, and it used its runtime well, with good tense moments, good planning moments, and a good moment with Worf and the other Klingons in the bar, where we get to see them in their downtime a bit, which I thought was cool. I gave it a B+. I gave this one a B+, as well. We did get a closer look at how the Klingons do stuff, but Worf seeming to be the only one who cared about anything, and everyone else just kind of hanging out, it made it seem like the Klingons didn't actually care about the outcome, more about just getting to fight and blow shit up. And for this being a Klingon civil war, none of the tactics and strategy were actually done by the Klingons. It was also a little disappointing that the first part of this two-parter focused so heavily on Worf, but this episode pushed him to the back. I really liked seeing Picard and Sela's plans in action, and how they tried to outthink and counter each other. Though I thought the whole Sela tasha subplot was a little out of place here, it needed more time if they really wanted to expand on that. Is she going to be a new big threat from now on, or is this just a one-off thing? I liked Data's subplot. I did think it was too obvious, but I did like that the first officer didn't become his friend or whatever by the end. This whole subplot also could have had a lot more time dedicated to it, felt rushed. Overall, I liked the first part of this two-parter better, and this one wasn't bad, but there were just so many things going on. So we've made it to Season 5. Be sure to subscribe so you can stick with us through the rest of the show. Um, I feel like I, I, I sounded too genuine. I didn't really mean it, but I think our viewers know that by now. <laughs>